Hi, my name is Alyssa Aaron and I do all kinds of art. Mainly I've been doing Animal Crossing stuff, but I thought I'd switch it up and get some inspiration from other artists I admire, like Anusha Said. Anusha has a channel here on YouTube, but also has a website, Twitter, Instagram. I'll put all those links in the description below. She has an amazingly colorful, adorable, just lovely style to look at. I really enjoy looking at all of her type of work from fan art, like these awesome Pixar, Disney posters she's done for galleries. I love the Sunnyside Daycare one. It's probably my favorite piece of hers. This beautiful um, Agrabah art. Just all of her art's amazing. She has an amazing sense of color. All of her art has this really um, profound sense of joy to it that I really love and I thought I could learn a thing or two by um, emulating some aspects of her art that I really appreciate in terms of texture, color, and shape. So I thought I would do a piece inspired by Anusha of a subject matter I don't frequently tackle, which is babies. And I'll talk a little bit more about why in the video, so let's get started. <laughs> This video is about a, a lot of new things, if you may have noticed. If you're not new to this channel, the title there was a little different. The Drawing Inspiration title is a, a new series I'm trying out here. And if you are new to this channel, you should subscribe because I upload new art uh, videos like this every single week. But um, I wanted to try this new series. I'd done a video previously where I was inspired by artist Lin Shen. I'd like to take another stab at that and make a, a proper effort to do a piece inspired by her work in the future. But I thought it would be cool to kind of marry my own style and sensibilities and things that I find cute while taking inspiration um, from other artists I admire, like Anusha, her sense of color and texture and things like that. Like, learn something new from other artists and be inspired by other artists while also not doing, like, the Walmart great value version of these artists. I want it to be very much an Alyssa piece that's informed and inspired by another artist versus trying to make, like, an off-brand version of their art, if that makes sense. So. I wanted to do a piece of a baby for a couple reasons. First of all, it's not a subject matter I do a lot. I don't draw a lot of people, I mainly focus on animals, and then I draw a lot of cartoon food and objects and things like that for a lot of my clients, but animals is definitely what I draw more than anything else, and I really struggle with drawing people, hands, faces, skin tones, things I kind of struggle with, um, so I wanted to tackle a subject matter I wouldn't normally go out of my way to do. And also, Anusha draws really beautiful babies and children. I think they're really adorable without being, like, too cute. Do you guys know when you're watching, like, a cartoon movie and sometimes they have, like, I don't know, a parody cute character where the eyes take up 90% of their head and they're supposed to be, like, sickly sweet? Like, you know, that's too cute. But uh, Anusha's babies are just flat out cute. You want to just give them a big hug and they look super cute with their little toys and props and everything. I mentioned in the intro briefly that the Sunnyside Daycare piece is probably my favorite piece of hers. Both the, uh, she did a digital painting of it and then painted like with gouache I think or acrylic or something. She did a painting of the digital painting so that she could submit it to a gallery show for Pixar stuff which is super cool. But I just think the colors in that are so beautiful and like the, the sense of fun it evokes and I don't know just there's something about her art that just makes me smile and I really love her stuff. You might have noticed my little Alyssa Aaron logo in the corner as well. That's actually a new logo. I hired a logo designer um, who I found on Twitter, Mario Graciotti. I apologize if I'm butchering that last name, but Mario does incredible work. He's worked with Disneyland on stuff. He's done amazing typography work for all kinds of things and like mock-up stuff on his Twitter. It's just beautiful. He has a really awesome sense of, again, color and he does typography and logos and stuff that have a sense of personality to them, which is something I've been looking for in a logo designer for a while. I've been shopping around for somebody to redo my Alyssa Aaron logo for ages, but I feel like a lot of people that do typography do um, very corporate you know, types of things that they're very nice and professional and it's good work, but it wasn't what I was looking for. So anyway, Mario knocked it out of the park and I think the colors are phenomenal. It's my primary color scheme that I love, but just given a little bit of flavor, like it's a different red, yellow, and blue than what I was using and it's a type of lettering I would have never picked, but I love it. So anyway, why I have the logo up there is because I want to use it for the color base for this picture, the red, yellow, and blue. Because I noticed that Anusha, her logo on her website where it's the little glasses for the OO in her name, which is so cute, she likes to use bright mustardy yellows a lot in her art and I think it's just a color she gravitates to. I don't think she's 
trying to incorporate her logo color into stuff for like branding reasons. I think she's just a good artist with a good sense of color and that particular shade of gold just happens to look really good in a lot of places. But I liked the idea of incorporating my logo colors into uh, a piece. So I went ahead and added the red, yellow, and blue colors here. And here I'm just adding flat colors um, with a dry ink brush, which is a brush I hadn't really explored before in Procreate, but I saw somebody use it on TikTok of all things and I thought it was a really nice texture, so I'm like, I should give it a try. And now I'm in love with it, so I'm definitely gonna be using this brush for um, my flat colors in the future when I do artwork like this. I just think it turned out really super cool. But also, the second reason I wanted to draw a baby, I've been talking about the first reason for six minutes now, the second reason I wanted to draw a baby is because my sister is having a baby. I mentioned this in a previous video, but my sister is due in like three weeks from today, like coming up really quick here. And I want to do some artwork for the nursery, which will be in a future video. But if you guys will notice, this video will be put on two new playlists. New everything in this video, new series, whatever. New playlists. I'll have one for drawing inspiration for videos like this, where I'm drawing inspiration from other artists. And I'll also have another playlist called For My Niece. And that's going to be videos where anything that remotely is inspired by, you know, my niece, who's going to be born soon, um, I'm going to put on a playlist and any of those videos that are on that playlist, whatever ad revenue money I end up making from them, I'm going to gift her um, at some point. It depends on how much the amount is. I don't make a lot of money on YouTube. I make like a couple dollars a video. So if it's only like a hundred bucks a year from now, like maybe I'll just make it, make it wait for five years. But at some point I will be gifting that money to her. It's all money for her. So any video that's on my um, For My Niece playlist, if you guys want to make, make someone's day or something, any of the videos that are going to be on this new playlist will um, make ad revenue specifically for her because I thought that would be a cool thing to do like uh, on her birthday one day I just give her like this wad of cash or whatever <laughs> and if she's super little and can't spend her own money then um, my sister can choose to spend it however she wishes as long as it's um, for her so I think that'll be a nice thing to do and on another note um, the little stars on his pajamas is kind of serendipitous because so I made this with the idea that like that there would be stars, moons, and whatever to have kind of a sky celestial theme and like the theme of like reach for the stars kid and that kind of vibe, right? So I thought stars would be appropriate, but I specifically chose yellow stars on a blue pajama set because I was inspired by of all things. There was this website for adoptable animals I used to browse in the, in the 90s called Starlight Sweetwater Valley. And there was a background on there that was just powder blue with little yellow stars and I was obsessed with it for some reason and many things from this site. Maybe I'll do a piece inspired by this site like of a unicorn or something. I think that'd be fun. Um, some pixel art or something. But anyways, that's that was the inspiration for the pajamas. And then later when I was browsing Anusha's website to find an image to use for the thumbnail, I went to her kids page and I noticed, oh, there's a kid with stars on his pajamas and it's yellow stars on blue pajamas. Like, I just thought that was like a funny coincidence. And for a second I was like, oh, should I change mine so it doesn't look like a copy? But I'm like, it's clearly referenced from her style so that I didn't see the point of doing that. Anyways, that's where the inspiration for the pajamas came from. Such a random um, source of inspo, but those things stick with us, you know? So here's the part where I'm actually implementing what I'm learning and observing from Anusha's work. I started with the flat colors after I did my sketch, and here I want to use a variety of textures, and I'm not entirely sure what brushes she uses for her pieces, but if you zoom into the, like, the skin on the baby's faces, there's a couple different um, soft chalky types of textures and the hair has like these nice chunky pieces of different textured brushes. I think before she had said on YouTube or somewhere else that she uses um, the same Bonobo, Bonobo, whatever chalk brush that I use for everything. And I, she mentioned a couple other brushes I think at some point, but honestly I couldn't remember so I was just being a little experimental. And I also don't want to like look up the exact process of how people make their art. I think it's more fun of an idea to observe people's art and then try to try to learn from it without learning exactly what they did. Just kind of, you know, that way you can take inspiration rather than um, actively copying, if that makes sense. So <laughs> I wanted to learn by looking and trying to get a feel for how to imitate the overall um, feeling of a piece without like necessarily copying technique styles. Like here, I have no idea if this is how she does her shading. She probably does it on a clipping mask layer or something, I don't know. I use a lot of clipping masks in this piece, which I can actually do now because I have a new iPad that can actually handle like a decent amount of layers. I never ran out of layers in this piece, even though it's like 
10, like 11 by 9 inches, 300 DPI. Um, on my old iPad, I could maybe do, I don't know, 12, 15 layers before it's like, sorry, you ran out of layers. So I got really used to doing everything on one or two layers. Here, I was just throwing on layers willy-nilly and doing all kinds of things and trying new things out. So the new iPad definitely has given me a lot more freedom to do stuff like this and try out different textures and color overlays and have more fun. And I think the art benefits a lot from um, having that kind of freedom to do this kind of thing. Here I was struggling with like wanting to keep the shadows but also wanting to keep them soft and I was taking note of how in um, especially the sunny side daycare piece like the shadow under the table in that piece is very faint and like if you were thinking realistically the shadow would be really dark but art isn't about imitating reality all the time <laughs> especially very stylized um, illustrations like this so it's okay to have a shadow that's very light even though in reality the shadow against where the baby meets the play mat would be very dark you know it's okay to have artistic um, freedom with those kinds of things and that's stuff i'm trying to unlearn like i feel like i have characters that have very stiff poses very often because i'm thinking well an elbow wouldn't bend like that but my brain needs to go oh it's a cartoon it doesn't matter they can bend their elbow in any direction as long as it looks good it looks good you know and i think the soft shadow looks a lot better than a harsh, more realistic shadow would look. I just think it looks nicer, so lesson number one million learned from doing this piece. I did learn a lot of really subtle things about um, how to shade, um, using more clipping masks and stuff like that to layer on textures and colors more than I would ever do for my Animal Crossing art or anything that I've really been doing on this channel. I also got to try out those um, Jing Sketch brushes again. I'll put a link to, um, I have an affiliate code in the description below. I make a couple bucks if you guys download the brush set. But I really like the uh, Jing Sketch brushes, especially this like nice tapered one that I use on the hair. It, it ended up being the perfect thing to get these nice chunks of hair that have that kind of um, grainy texture at the end of them that come to a nice point. It was way better than like if I had used the Procreate Default 6B brush, it would have been too grainy, too many holes in it, you know? And if I had used maybe dry ink, it would have been a little too harsh and solid. But that um, Jing Sketch brush really worked um, nicely for that. And I used it in a couple other little places, I believe, too. It's kind of hard to tell when the footage is this sped up. But guys, if it was real time, this would have been like a three hour video, you know? So <laughs> just trying to get out what I learned and the information I'm going to take with me from this piece in this particular speed paint video. So after experimenting with some textures and things on the hair, I was a little more confident because I was honestly more worried about the hair than anything. Hair is also something I struggle at. I don't draw a lot of um, human hair or things like that. I've really only done a couple pieces of mermaids, like the one that's on my channel. And other than that, I don't do a lot of painting that involves human hair. So I was worried that the, uh, the texture wouldn't pay off, but I really like what I did with the texture and the highlight. It's a little different than what Anusha does in her pieces. She has a lot more um, depth to her textures, but that's okay. I'm learning and again, I'm not trying to make um, a copy of Anusha's art anyway, so it's okay that I did it in my own way. Here I was experimenting with, I knew at some point I wanted the shadows of the um, the two arches from this little play toy or whatever you call it, play mat. Um, I wanted them to form an X, but then I thought, um, oh my gosh, it's going to look like an, an X across the baby's face, which looks like ominous or scary or something. So I ended up playing with that more and really softening that up to the point where right in the middle where the X actually intersects, I think I fully erase it and then just softly um, carry it out from there. So there's like a hint of the shadow that ends up being on um, the baby's face at some point, but it's not really pronounced or darkened or anything like that. Because I did think it felt a little like ominous and scary, almost like horror-ish if there's like an X over the baby's face. Despite all the other colors and everything else and how cute everything else is in the piece, I felt like it was it was not good to have an X right over the baby's face. So <laughs> I really softened that up to the point where you can hardly see it. And it works much better like that. But I did want the shadows. I was like, at some point should I even keep the shadows? But I'm glad I kept them because it does add a sense of uh, depth to the piece that wasn't there before I put those little shadows. It makes it feel like... The baby's really on the playmat and those bars are really a couple feet above the baby and whatever. It helps solidify the piece a little more, so I am glad I kept them and then erased them as much as I needed to to make the piece look better. Yeah, the X is still very visible on the baby's face there, but <laughs> that does get changed at the end. 
And I'm just now noticing I had all that reference in the bottom right for all these toys because I was gonna the initial idea is I was gonna have all these toys scattered all over the around the playmat or whatever. But once I sketched the playmat, I was kind of like it doesn't need anything else, and I think it would take away from. I want to title the piece "Reach for the Stars," and I want it to be kind of like sweet or like something that maybe a mom might buy for her, her kid's nursery or something as like a little inspirational thing. I think it would take away from the message of it if there was other stuff around. Though I think I would like to explore that idea and draw another kid or a baby just... I love the idea of doing a kid on a like a floor mat or something from an aerial angle and there's just like a sea of toys everywhere to be like a more realistic um, portrayal of what having a kid is like. I'm not a parent but I have friends and family with kids obviously so I know that the house ends up being like more toy than furniture at some point, which I think would be for, it would make a really funny piece, I think. Here I'm just doing a Bonobo chalk overlay of like purple and blue tones and kind of softening up that red and blue on the bar, or the red and yellow on the bars to uh, make the piece just a little bit more pastel and sugary sweet. And overall I'm really happy with this piece and I'm really happy that I um, decided to do this series because without actively studying and learning from other artists like Anusha, um, I maybe would have never tackled a piece like this, and I really think it came out um, successfully and I'm really pleased with it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you have favorite artists that you would like to suggest for this series. I have a whole lineup of people I would love to do videos like this for. So let me know if you guys have favorite artists that you really look up to in the comments below and I'll definitely check out their Instagrams and stuff. Be sure to like the video if you liked it and subscribe if you aren't already. I upload new videos like this every single week. Thank you guys for watching and have a fantastic rest of your day.